Welcome back to another episode of Fixing to Ride. In this episode, I'll be bolting on some accessories and taking a break from some of the major components. If you're asking why I'm putting these things on now, it's certainly not because this is the best thing to do as far as the assembly process goes. It's simply because that sometimes you just have enough time to get a certain job done and it's better to get something done rather than nothing done. Even if that means that you may have to take some parts off later on, I find you usually learn something and you'll get at least some productivity out of it instead of just waiting until you have time to get done what you want to get done. So you have to be a little bit flexible on your um, assembly steps. So these foot pegs are the Tusk Racing Billet foot pegs. And I gotta say the quality looks really good. They're very aggressive, they're very wide. They're not pivoting, and I wish I had pivoting uh, foot pegs, but uh, for the budget, uh, I think these are around $60. You really can't beat uh, the value. Next up, I'll install the kickstand, the kickstand switch sensor assembly, the front drive sprocket, and the front shifter. So just a word of caution, I wrapped these wires coming out of the magneto with a little bit extra um, electrical tape to give it a little bit more protection, but it's really made it hard getting it into this channel, again, which I didn't even realize until I went to assemble everything. I managed to get it in there, but uh, you know, looking back, I would probably just forego adding any additional electrical tape or just to make sure to take off all the old electrical tape. So here I'm using the Tusk Countershaft Seal Kit, which includes the collar and the O-ring required, as you can see I'm installing here, as well as a new countershaft seal. But as you can see, I already have one installed, and that's because I had a new one already that came with the engine. So I'll just save the Tusk one for either a different build or for when this one goes bad. I'm adding some grease here, not because it needs it as a friction barrier, but because it'll act as a rust barrier and hopefully keep everything a little bit cleaner. The driving sprocket is a primary drive 14 tooth sprocket, and I'll be adding the Eagle Mike prevailing torque nut instead of using the standard nut and the lock washer from Kawasaki. And about here is when I realized I need to install the shifter because the bike's in neutral and I can't torque down the prevailing torque nut. So that'll lead me to installing the shifter earlier than I expected, but it's fine. It, uh, it worked out well. In the end, I'll be using the Tusk shift lever. Yes, it is aluminum, which I'm not a huge fan of, but hey, it came with the bike and uh, it, it looks nice. It looks rigid enough. So I'll just replace it if or, and when it breaks. And if you're wondering, it is about, I don't know, inch and a half, two inches longer than the stock one. So if uh, you're looking for a longer shift lever, uh, you may want to give this one a shot. I'm not sure how the IMS one compares as far as length goes, but this one's definitely cheaper. And again, I'll leave a, a link in the description. With 
the bike out of neutral, I can finally torque the propelling nut down to spec. Next I'll move on to the kickstand switch. This whole assembly looks overkill to me, uh, looks heavy and unnecessary, and I'll probably delete this whole switch setup later on, but for now I'm going to keep it on, that way if I do have a problem, I know it's not this guy, or it's unlikely to be this guy since it was working when I took it off, that way I'll have one less thing to troubleshoot, and then I'll just take it off later on, and that'll be a little bit easier. Sometimes it's easier not to make too many changes um, up front that could cause you issues later on. But for now, I'm going to clean it up, get it installed, and maybe this will help someone out who is looking on how to install this assembly. It's not the most straightforward thing. If you notice the shock in the background, don't worry, it's not because you missed that video. I simply haven't posted it yet. It'll be the one right after this one. I kind of uh, flip-flopped between these two projects and I had the shock just sitting there being mocked up. But uh, I will do a full video on that installation and which shock I'm using. So in several of the plastics that are faded, I'm using Rust-Oleum truck bed liner. This stuff is really durable, really great, and adheres to plastic really well. So that wraps it up for this video. Again, nothing too special, but uh, all these parts are necessary and hopefully it'll serve as an assembly guide for someone who's looking on how to install these on a Gen 1 KLR. Again, thanks for watching and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.